So let's look at how we can solve uh, discrete logarithm problems. In this presentation, we'll look at the pollock hellman algorithm and how we can actually f uh, solve our discrete log problems. So initially, we'll look at uh, We'll look at discrete logarithms. Uh, discrete logarithms are used in the Diffie-Hellman method, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, uh, and also L-gamma encryption. The method that we'll look at was created uh, by this person here, uh, Stephen Polig, and he worked with uh, Martin Hellman, and they created the polig hellmans algorithm. So in this presentation, we'll look at how we can pick G and understand what a discrete log actually looks like. So here it is here, quite simple really. Uh, we have what's called the generator value, a g value. We raise it to the power of x and we take the mod of p. Uh, p constrains the values that we get to between 0 and p minus 1. So we call this a finite field. z p defines that we have the integers up to p minus 1. And the challenge here, and the hard problem, is that it's actually very difficult to find the value of x, given the value of g, p, and y. So the method that we use, and it won't always work for the g values, because what we want for the g value is that for every value up to p minus 1, we should get a unique y value on the output. So this is the basic, uh, little basic Python program to be able to determine the values of g that are possible for a p-value, which will give us a cyclic output, or the full range of the cyclic output. If we try this example here. Here's an example. So we'll select a value of... 17 for our prime number and we can see the values that are possible are 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12 and 14. Okay, we can't pick any other value for g if we want to make sure that there is a unique output for x within the finite field. Uh, so this is the problem that we have, is that we have y we have g and we have p and we want to find out the value of x which actually caused that output of y. So within the finite field there will only be one value which will give us the correspondent output of y given the values of g and p. So in our normal logarithms as discovered by John Napier we can take a to the power of x to give h and then if we want to do the reverse, we do uh, the log to the base a of h to give us x. So in base 10, it's 10 to the power 4. If we do the inverse, log 10 of 10,000, we get 4. 10 to the power of 4 is equal to 10,000. The inverse log to the base 10 of 10,000 is 4. So the basic method that we, we use is this one. So this is taken from the Wikipedia page, and I'll explain it in a little bit more, more detail. Uh, and it'll probably be easier to see if we use the actual code involved. But one thing you should notice is that we're using the Chinese remainder theorem to be able to solve for this, this value. Chinese remainder theorem is used fairly extensively in these types of uh, problems, and we'll see how it's used in a little minute. So rather than uh, look at this algorithm, we'll look at, uh, at some examples. Okay, so this is what we do. We take a value of g, we know that. We take a, a value of p, our prime number, and then we get a number of factors uh, to be able to calculate uh, e. Q, we work out p minus 1, and Q is the factors of p minus 1. So I'll explain that in a little minute. So Q is the factors of, of p minus 1. So if we have, uh, say, a, 
a value of 17, then p minus 1 is 16, so the values are 2 times 2 times 2 gets us our prime number factors of p minus 1. So we take g to the power of p minus 1 upon q uh, to the power of e. I'll explain e in a little minute. And then we take h to the power of p minus 1 upon q to the power of e. And then we solve for this equation here. So it looks a bit confusing just now, but I'll explain through an example. So we can see in this case uh, we're solving 5 is equal to 22 to the power of x mod 53. So the way that we calculate our values uh, is that q is the factors of p minus 1. So p minus 1 is 52, so that is four, 2 times 2 times 13 is the prime number factors that we get for 53. Then for e, we calculate the number of times that each occurs. So in this case, 2 occurs twice and 13 occurs one time. So we lay out with our q values to be able to calculate. So we only have two uh, factors in p minus 1, so we have 2 and 13. E, uh, q equals 2 occurs twice and q 13 only occurs once. So we calculate g to the power of p minus 1, that's 52, divided by uh, q upon e. And we get a value here of 23. We then take the h value and then do the same thing, h to the power of p minus 1 upon q to the power of e. We then solve for this for x. And in the end, we get x is equal to 1 mod 4 and x is equal to 9 mod 13. We then use Chinese remainder theorem to be able to calculate what the value of x would be. Fairly easy to see in this case. 9 mod 4 is 1. 9 mod 13 is 9. So we can see here it's fairly easy to calculate this, but if we have large prime, large prime numbers, it'd be extremely difficult to do this. So we'll just try this example. And here we are here. So those are our values. And um, we can see here, when we plug it back in and determine 22 to the power of, 22 to the power of nine mod 53. Let's just use Python to calculate that. Just in case, it's, uh, it's not quite right. So we've got 5 to the power of 9 and mod 53 gives us 22, which is, which is correct. Okay, so we can see here we use Chinese remainder theorem. So this is uh, the code for Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, 1 is equal to x mod 4 and 9 is equal to x mod 13. You can see that with Chinese remainder theorem, the value is 9. If you're interested, this is the code here to be able to perform the Chinese remainder theorem. If we take another example, so this has a larger prime number. So in this case, we have 6 is equal to 7,531 to the power of x mod 8101. So again, we factorise out into the prime numbers, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 is equal to 7,530. That's p minus 1. So those are the q values we'll be using, 2, 3, and 5. And then we count the number of times, 1, 2, 2, and then we have 4 3s and 2 5s, so that becomes our Q and our E value. Then we calculate G to the power of P minus 1 upon Q to the power of E, 
and then we do the same for the h value, and then we solve here. This time we have three uh, core prime numbers, and so we end up having to solve the Chinese remainder theorem for the value of x, which will work with those four values. If we do the calculations, then the result is 6689. And we'll just check that with our little Chinese remainder theorem page. And here it is here. There is our three values that we have, and we've calculated that the value is 6689. And we plug it back in to just check our value. And we can see here if we do what we did before. And then hopefully we should end up with the same value. So we'll do print. And it's 7, 5, 3, 1 to the power of 6689 and then mod 8108 and sorry that's the g value 6 and that works so 6 to the power of 6689 uh, mod 8101 gives us the value of 7531. That's what we have there. Okay, so that's giving you an overview of solving discrete logs using the Pollock-Hellman algorithm. Thank you.